Thank you. 
Oh God, you've been so good to us. You've been better than we've been to ourselves. God, you have seen us through another week of dangers, toils, disappointments, highs, lows, and you still deliver us. So for that, God, we call your name, Jesus. Jesus. For that, we just call your name, God. We thank you, God, that when we call your name, you hear God. We thank you, God, that when we call your name, you answer our prayers, God. God, we thank you when we call your name that you heal the sick. When we call your name, you give strength unto the weak. When we call your name, you bring us from darkness into a marvelous light. So on this Sunday, God, we just come to call your name, to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor, God. God, we pray that your word will sink deep down in our hearts today, God. That as the preacher prepares to come, God, that you will anoint him and cover him with your spirit, God. That on this Sunday, as we call on Trinity Sunday, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, that as we call your manifold, trifold name, God, that you will continue to answer us as we continue to stand before you in this season. God, we thank you for every person listening on the phone line, on the Facebook, on the YouTube, on the Zoom. God, we pray that you will continue to cover them in this season, God. You have brought us through a long, long season, God. But we know that you did not bring us this far to leave us. So we ask that you continue to walk with us, strengthen us, and cover us. That your grace and mercy will go before us. That you will put a hedge of protection around us. We lift up those who are walking through bereavement, those who are dealing with anxiety and depression, those who are suffering loss of relationship, friendship. God, those who are struggling financially, those in the hospitals and in the jail houses, God, those in the hedges and the byways. We put them before you today, God, as we call your name. Because you said in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. So we come confessing that you are our Lord and our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The scripture reading for today on this Trinity Sunday comes from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through four. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I will continue through verse Seven. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt 
is taken away and your sin atoned for. The word of God to encourage the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Amen. We greet you on this Sunday morning and welcome you to this worship experience. Thank you for joining us on all of our platforms. Thank you for coming into the sanctuary to our praise team and our musicians and our ministerial staff and our AV tech that continues to be faithful. We thank God for each one of you on this Sunday. We just encourage you to stay connected with us on all of our social media platforms that are appearing below me on the screen, whether it is our Facebook, our YouTube channel, uh, we just invite you to connect. Our conference line is open. There is no reason for you not to stay connected and in fellowship with God and his people. And so as always, you will receive this week's announcements via your, our text distribution. If you're not receiving it, we ask you to connect via our, uh, and send your information to 404. 548-8169 and we'll make sure you get on our distribution list so you know what is going on here at Mount Zion AME College Park. Uh, we just thank you for being so faithful. We thank you for continuing to support all of our ministries. Uh, we could not do this without you. Each weekend and week out, we are serving people through our Serve First Food Ministry that operates they're here on Thursday, and then they're back on Saturday from 10 to 2. Tell somebody, come by, give some of your time to service to others. We would love to have you share with us. And then Monday through Friday, our educational ministry is operating here where we uh, have our young people. They, they finished up their final week of school this past week. Amen, amen. There's, uh, they are out of school. Uh, so uh, beginning this Monday, we will be transitioning and effective June the 7th, we will have our uh, summer camp starting that will run from June the 7th through July 23rd. So tell somebody if they're looking for a safe uh, place for their kids during the summer, we will be so glad to have them join us. We will also be designated as a summer food site where those kids can, uh, that are even not participating in the summer camp, they can come and pick up a free lunch each and every day. And we are so thankful for your presence in this time. We give God all the honor, we give him all the glory for everything that is taking place here at Mount Zion. But we couldn't do it without you. So God says give of your time, your talent, and your treasure. You can give of your time, by just volunteering in any of our ministries. You can give of your talent by doing the same. You can come, some of our kids need tutoring. They may need, uh, they may need some cultural enrichment. Uh, they need to get outside and run around. So you may want to coach them in basketball or track or whatever. Just come on by. We got plenty for you to do. There's plenty good room in God's kingdom to do the ministry that God has called us to. And then your treasure. We cannot do ministry here at Mount Zion. We serve on average of about 85 to 88 families every week in our food pantry. And we could not do that without your financial support. Uh, our kids, we provide for them. Uh, they pay a fee, but we supplement. And so all of this is God's kingdom. And that's one thing that it has shown us in these past 15 months. The building may be closed, but God has shown us the true church, which is doing ministry. It's not about coming in the building dressed up and sitting down on the cushion seats and doing a couple of claps and then we get up and go home. It's about, <laughs> it's about seeing after those who God has put us in care of, the least, the lost. He said, go ye into all the world. He didn't say come into the building and sit down. He said, go, do, see, and care for others. And that is what we're doing. So we ask you to sow a seed in support of the ministry. You can give. I mean, we have to pay for the everything, the lights, the, the, um, the air, the, uh, the ground that we sit on, that we walk on. Uh, all of that still continues. Plus, we are doing ministry. So we invite you to just sow a seed. You can give via all of our electronic giving apps. We have Cash App, we have Zelle, we have Billify. 
You can also drop it in our P.O. box if you just want to write a good old manual check. You can do that. All those options are appearing on the screen uh, as you see now. And then you can always just pull up right to the corner. There is a secure lock mailbox. You put it in, can't nobody else get it out except our finance team. You can drop it off there and we'll be so glad to receive it. Of course, the finance team is here each Saturday uh, between 11 and uh, 12. So if you wanna stop by and put it in their hand personally, feel free to do so. But we just thank you for being a faithful supporter of the ministry that is taking place here at 6045 um, Riverdale Road. And we thank God for what God is doing in this place. Uh, we invite you to connect with us. Uh, maybe some of you have lost connection over this season. Uh, if you're looking for a place to connect, I can't tell you a better place. I would love to be your connection. Uh, so just connect, send us your information. 404-548-8169, and we will welcome you to fellowship in this community. We're so thankful for what God is doing, and on this Sunday, we are preparing to receive a word uh, from a preacher that needs no introduction, amen. He is gonna come and lift us up on this Trinity Sunday and give us an awesome word from the Lord. But before he comes, this praise team, I have to give them a hand clap myself, amen. Amen. We thank God for their faithfulness. They have stood in the gap for months. Yeah. Oh, yes. When all everybody was locked on lockdown, they still ventured out and followed what God was calling them to do. And I do not take that lightly. I do not take the musicians lightly that have been faithful. Um, and God says, be faithful over a few things. And I will make a ruler. Over many. And so I say this to them because uh, as their uh, as their shepherd, God has a great blessing in store for each one of you because of your faith. If he hadn't done it already, God is going to show up in a mighty way. God has not taken for granted what you have done in this season. It ain't about the, the money, it ain't about nothing, it's about your faithfulness. And I declare and decree today that God has a blessing in your name. And I'm praying that right now that God will, man will manifest it in your life right now in a way that you never imagined. Something that you just never expected is about to come your way. God put that in my spirit. It wasn't anything I planned to see, but say, but God put it in my spirit. That God has something special in store for you. And I, and I pray that it will be bountiful and that it will overflow into what God has designed for each of you. I'm going to get out of their way. They're going to come and they're going to set the atmosphere. And then the Reverend Ezekiel Powers is going to come and break the bread of life for us, to us, and feed us till we want no more. Amen.
me No wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Running after me No tower you won't light up Miles where you won't climb up Running after me No wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me
Messiah. Uh, he had churned their stagnant faith to heighten revelation. He had died on the cross between two thieves. Mm -hmm. He had he had he had a miraculous resurrection from a borrowed tomb. And he had appeared before thousands uh, before his ascension. Yes, it, it, it was hard to get those same early Christians witnesses to perform as a cohesive unit. Lord knows, don't mention this time of getting people to come together in a cohesive moment and coming together in unity Amen. without all and without fussing. Amen. <laughs> without falling out. Right. Uh, I know I'm right about it. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. And uh, but 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 some of them must have said, he's gone now. We can't see him or we can't even talk to him anymore. Well, uh, what was wrong with them? Uh, even if they didn't see it uh, with their own eyes, they didn't believe Peter. So I count them. Christ's resurrection, or John's account, or doubting tongues, who touched Christ's pure side. It's hard uh, it's to believe that they lost interest in Christ so quickly. Uh, or, or is it? Is it? Is it hard? Well, uh, you want to have to take a look at the church world today. Uh, to know that we have the same revolving door at the rear of the church that the early saints had in their temples. Uh, folks come in the body of Christ and are uh, full of emotion, sentiment about their love for Jesus <coughs> or Christ. But it doesn't take much for them to turn around these days. As soon as some find out that getting salvation means giving their time, the talent and ties to God, uh, that real door suddenly sprang wide open. I, I heard all the arguments <clears throat> a person can fabricate about what they don't have to, why they don't have to attend church to prove they are Christian. Yeah, y'all, y'all hear me now? Uh, I, I can pray at home. They say uh, I can watch my favorite tele TV evangelist on the Word Word Channel. Uh, I can enjoy grammar, uh level worship music anywhere I am by using my cell phone. All kind of excuses comes up. Uh, uh, but but it's all good. Uh, 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 and I'm not condemning uh, 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 those habits. You know, I'm not condemning those habits. As a young people would say, it's all good. But a TV evangelist can't visit you when you get sick. <clears throat> or pray with you when you lose a loved one. Or marry your children. Or bless your grandchildren. Or offer you personal counseling in time of crisis. But you know what, I don't want to hold you long today, but there are three essential, uh, three absolutely necessary reasons why some assembly is required by the saints of God. Mm -hmm. The very first one that I will point out to you is that we are civil to worship. All right. We don't just come together to look at one another, hmm. see what kind of clothes they're wearing, See how they have been fixed. The writer of the text, and we don't know exactly who the writer of the text, as I give a little background, we don't know exactly who the, the writer of the text is. Some think that it's Paul, but we don't, the, the scholars don't write it, says that it's Paul. And it very well could have been uh, uh, Luke. Uh, but it sounds like Paul. Uh, and, but, but one of the things that I, I realized when we was talking about this worship, the writer of the text came to reprimand the body of believers in the church 
not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together for good reason. Simple. Because our worship is not just our outer demonstration or our inward conversion. It's our gift to God when we come and worship. God inhabits the praise of his people. Uh, in other words, his presence amongst us is strengthened by our worship. Y'all gonna pray with me now? Uh, it, it was Jesus himself who said in Matthews 18, 19, and 20, he said that, that if two of uh, you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall act, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three comes together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Well, uh, if, if all that power can be unleashed with just two or three, imagine the spiritual power uh, that is unleashed when we all come together to worship the Lord on one accord. Pentecost is our perfect example. When thousands uh, of Jesus Christ's disciples gathered to mourn their loss of a Savior. Jesus appeared before them. Not only did Jesus appear to them after his death, but his presence and pronouncement that he would uh, be with them always, strengthened them for the challenge. Y'all gonna pray with me today, won't you? He strengthened them for the challenge of the journey that, that laid ahead of them. If they had not assembled together, uh -huh. look what they would have missed. Uh -huh. hmm. But wait a minute. We don't just worship for what we can get from God. All right. Hmm? Really? Y'all follow me now? Right. When some people start falling on hard times, uh -huh. uh -huh. they've been passing by the church. But when they're on hard times and they can't, they can't get no they can't get no relief from mom and daddy and nobody around to be fine. The first place they run to is to the church. You know what? We get worship. Uh, uh, we worship for what we must give to God, and, and we have an obligation as Christians to give God glory and honor. You know, I like what David said in Psalm 86 and 12 and 13. And, 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 uh, David started talking about our praise and our gifts. That's all he does for us. And no, um, uh, uh, nobody knows it better than David. Because he had so many struggles in life. And, and, but David said, I praise the old Lord my God. All with all of my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy <clears throat> toward me, and thus has delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Uh -huh. mm. Think about all the hell huh. you've been delivered from. Yeah. And, and anybody out there been delivered from all right. some stuff? Yeah. And I don't know your story, but God does. <clears throat> He knows you used to curse. He knows you used to hang out at the nightclub and drink till the last bell rang. <laughs> Y'all wanna hear that, dude. But he knows you used to be a liar, a thief. Some even been a whole mother in the dog. Hmm? But you have confessed it of your sin and he forgave you. And, and he wants to hear you say, thank you. You see, our praise is our thanks. Mm -hmm. the, songs, the, the songs of Zion that we sing are our thank you. The hands that we lift and give reverence to God are our thank you. But there's still another aspect of worship. 
that absolutely is necessary for every Christian. When we are all, or when we are all in a collective worship, God speaks to us. Uh, uh, he don't. He does speak to us. Uh, uh, uh. Would you ask that question? Mm -hmm. He speaks through the man of God who delivers his message. Uh, to us, a message of hope, a message of direction, a message of redemption. So come. The hymn writer said, let us worship uh, together. Let us give him our praise. But not only do we need to come together and worship with the Lord, uh, we, 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 we come to worship together to assemble ourselves to work. You know, some people don't think they ought to get their hands dirty in the church. Uh, think that everything ought to be paid for. But, 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 but that is this dirty, uh, 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 it, 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 a dirty word when we start talking like that, that. That makes weak saints run for the revolving door. When you start talking about work sometimes. There are a million excuses. That comes up that for for not lending your talents to for God's time, the biggest one, mm -hmm. and, I, and some of you could probably already quote it before I even speak it. I don't have time. Mm -hmm. But check your calendar. <clears throat> Did you have time last week to meet with your friend? All right. Gossip on the phone to get your hair and nails done. Uh -huh. Hit them all for a sale. Wash your car, <laughs> go to a party, read a book, take a nap. Some folks even wash their dogs and give them rubber baths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had time, but Sunday morning, you ain't got time. The point is that we make time for everything we want to do. We make, but we can't make time for our Savior who bled and died for us. Mm. Mm. My, my. But, 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 but we'll, we'll, we glorify God by the, we glorify God by the fruits of our labor. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what makes us disciples, and that's what makes us Christians uh, of God, of, of Christ. And, and I didn't say it, Jesus said it. John 15 and 8, and, and, and take a minute to read it, it's, and some would say that they would what? But that was just no fun in it. Mm. I admit that ministry is hard work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a servant of God should be able to find joy in everything. Yeah. You know, a, a, a story was told about a friend who had another friend that lived on the other side of the track. The train came right through that back yard. And, and the day that he was sitting in his yard uh, having a cold glass of lemonade, when that conversation was interrupted by the engineer train whistle, the soul man, he said, he nursed the whistle like a man caught in the blues from a horn on the Beaver Street. But then he told him about another engineer he called Puff Daddy. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> Who pulled the whistle in quick. Shout, shout. That sang the happy song as he moved down the track. And he learned something from those engineers. He learned that there's nothing better than to find something to enjoy in whatever work you are asked to perform. Uh -huh. It's just as hard to use our talent for God as it is to use our talents at our place of employment. But just like our place of employment, we serve God for the reward to pay at the end of our journey. We love the same about those uh, metaphorical crowns we all gonna wear when we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but 
but we receive those crowns based on the quality of our service to Christ. Yeah, we can say and sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the roll. But if you don't offer your time and talent to the one who saved you, don't be surprised at the end of the journey. If instead of crown, you get a lapel pin. You know, it pins something on you. Uh -huh. uh, but but, but we are selling ourselves together for worship and for what? Work. There's one more reason that we're all coming together and assembling uh -huh. ourselves together. And it's very important. We ought to assemble ourselves together to witness. To witness. All witnesses does not take place outside of the walls of the church. Everybody comes through the door and they fool to say, we still on a journey. Mm -hmm. Somebody need a word from somebody <clears throat> inside the building. Mm -hmm. And much of our witnesses take place right here. But our text says today that we are supposed to uh, provoke each other to love and do good works. Mm -hmm. Can you provoke anyone to do anything if you're not part of the team? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. What else? This letter that Paul wrote in Thessalonians, Paul said in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. And edify one another. <clears throat> we are to witness unto one another. Because it's all about edification of lifting up the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. it's, it's our responsibility. We're selling ourselves together to, to share our spiritual uh, experiences. Encouraging one another. <clears throat> celebrating our victories. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't worship in the temple mm -hmm. and retreat to his privacy. He spent time in daily fellowship with his disciples. <clears throat> the disciples needed <clears throat> his fellowship to learn from him. And Jesus said to, uh, to them, then shall men know you follow me because you love each other. Mm -hmm. Trust the Lord. Trust love, seek love, express love. Mm. And if you love the saints of God, <clears throat> you will have a deeper desire to assemble with them, to encourage them, to love and to do good work. Uh -huh. That's how we grow stronger in the Lord. Yeah. We're like a corn on a farm. The farmer can't grow one row of corn. The plant will sprout. And sure enough, but 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 they will not produce what are the ears of corn. Corn has to be planted in several holes. I'm a farm boy, I know. Okay. And, and because the plant nurtures each other, uh -huh. uh, uh, we are just like corn ears. As Christians, we nurture each other to strengthen the roots of our common faith in Christ. Uh -huh. Should you be able to see how. All right. <clears throat> Why well, there is a required assembly uh -huh. for the Christian church. Mm -hmm. And I mean uh, real Christians mm -hmm. who really believe that the Bible is God, divinely inspired word. Yeah, but those who really <coughs> believe that God's word is perfect, mm -hmm. will for all mankind. Paul said it like this in Colossians 2 and 6. <coughs> Paul told the backsliding 
Colossians, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so ye walk in him. Mm -hmm. Now get a witness. He didn't say it, but sit. But he said, walk, that we might say sometimes get a move on. <laughs> well, I stopped by to tell you today, there is a need for us to come together and worship. Because we move to the approach of the throne of God. We move to establish a relationship with God. We move, yeah, to yield to the Spirit of God. We move to trust the promises of God. Can yeah, I get a witness to the place? We move and we come together to respond to the word of God. We move and we come together to fellowship with the saints of God. We move and we come together to the faithful, to the household of God. If Jesus was playing a game of chess with you this well, he would say, you got to make a move. Right. And I don't know about you, but I believe he's responding to the word of God. Yeah, I believe he's saying, trust him in the promises of God. I believe he's telling us,
there's somebody out there you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I can remember back in the 70s. Never will forget it. She's going to heaven now. Doing all she could to pull me back to the side of the Christian But I had my own agenda. And couldn't nobody tell me nothing.
purchased. And we were purchased for a price. And it comes with instructions. And it tells you how to put it together. You can't ride the bike until it is assembled. Your garage door won't work until it's been assembled. Whatever you get has to be put together in order to work. Even if it's a refrigerator, when you bought it out of the store, all you had to do was plug it in. But somewhere it had to be put together. It had to be assembled in order for it to work. When you went out and bought that car, all you had to do was get it in and drive it. But somewhere it came down the assembly line. It lets us know that nothing works without assembly. And the people of God cannot work with God and for God. And God cannot work through us without assembly. We thank you for joining us. We thank you to the preacher for that awesome word. We thank you for worshiping. We thank you for encouraging the preacher. We praise God for each one of you. I know I see the smoke coming up all up and down the street. Uh-huh, y'all got the potato salad ready, the baked beans, the corn on the cob, the ribs are ready, the chicken is ready. And so we're not going to hold you up any longer. We thank that God that you made time and space and gave God your best praise and your best worship. So as you enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend and your holiday, we encourage you to be safe. Love.